Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem Roman 2 integer. This is an easy problem, but I would say the difficult part about this problem is really trying to understand the problem itself and the requirements that they want. Even though it's easy, I think it's a pretty good problem to, you know, to practice your problem solving skills. So as you may know, Roman numerals are represented by seven different symbols. They give us each symbol and the mapping value. And so what I'm just gonna do is, it's a pretty long explanation. I'm gonna summarize it to you in a few sentences. So we have this mapping of symbols to values. We're also told that Roman numerals are typically written from left to right in the largest to smallest order, meaning the largest symbol will go first and then the smaller symbol will go next. So if we wanted to write 1,000, uh, 10 or 1011 we would get the thousand first which is the biggest one we'd put an m and then we get the tens place which is next we'd get a x and then the one would be the i so then we'd write it like this right from largest to smallest and that's how they're typically written but there's a special case where you might put the smaller one before the larger one for example what happens if we do this i and then m we know m is a thousand we know i is one so what does this mean is this a thousand and one no because remember they're supposed to be from largest to smallest so what happens if you do put a smaller one before the larger one well you can only do this by adding a single smaller one before the larger one but basically when you put the smaller one first you're basically subtracting the value of the smaller one so what we're really saying here is this i is going to be negative so it corresponds to a one it's going to be a negative one the m is still going to be positive uh, so it's a thousand so we get a thousand minus one so really this value represents 999 Now you're probably thinking, what happens if we put two I's before the M? Is that going to be 998? Nope, because you can't put multiple smaller values before a larger value. If we wanted to write 998, we would have to do it differently. I think you know, this written from left to right would, I think, be 998. Or not left from right, I think I did it backwards. So this would go first, uh, then this would go next, and then this would go next. So, but, but that's not really important. If you care, you can, you know, read that. It's not too important. Just letting you know that those are the main rules. And I think that's pretty much it. Once you know this idea that, okay, if a smaller value goes before a larger one, and it, we can only have a single one of those happening, then we're going to be subtracting that. Otherwise, we're going to be reading from, uh, from largest to smallest. Then this problem becomes very straightforward. Literally, all you have to do is read the input string. So actually, I took this and rewrote it in the correct way. So this value equals 998. So how would we determine that? Well, because that's what the problem is about. We're given a string like this one, a Roman string. We want to know what value does it actually map to, right? So how do we do that? Let us let me show you. So we're going to read character by character, right? We're going to see, okay, is this character uh, followed by a larger character? Because if the next character is bigger than this one, that means this value is going to be negative. This one value is going to be subtracted, right? Because normally it's supposed to be from largest to smallest. We get the value of this one. It's not a thousand, it's a hundred, right? What's the next value? It's M. Its value is a thousand, right? So that is the case. That means this hundred is going to be negative. So, so far we have minus a hundred to our total value. Then we go to the next value, right? It's a thousand. What's the value that comes after it? It's only 10. So that means this value is actually going to be added because the larger value comes before the smaller value. So we are going to add this value. So we're going to say plus 1000. So far we're at 900. Next we go to X. It's followed by a character that's greater than it. This is 100. This is 10. So this 10 is going to be negative. So minus 10 puts us at 890. Uh, then we get to this value and it is 100. The next value is just 5. So the larger value is actually going to be added. So we're going to add 100 to this. Puts us at 990. Uh, then from here on, I'll just, it's pretty straightforward because this is 5, this is 1, this is 1, this is 1. So since this is from largest to smallest, right, it's in decreasing order, that means all of these are going to be added. Uh, obviously, if we have two consecutive ones, both of the values are equal, right? So if they're equal, of course, they are going to be added together. They're going to be positive. They're going to be contributing to the result in a positive way. So 5 plus 3, that's 8. So if we add 8 to this result, uh, we get 998. Eight, which is exactly what we wanted. I screwed up this eight, I think, but hopefully you get the idea. 
So it's as simple as that. We're just going to be reading through the string and potentially comparing adjacent values. And the way we're going to you know, get these values really easily, map the symbol to the value, the easiest way to do that is just a hash map. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Overall time complexity is just going to be big O of n because we can just scan through the entire input string. We're not really needing any extra memory. The memory is going to be big O of 1. Yes, we are going to be needing a hash map, but that hash map is just going to have seven values in it, right? It's not really going to be really big or anything. So it's definitely not big O of n. So now let me show you how trivial the code actually is once you understand the problem. So you can see that I basically summarized the problem in two comments up above. This is basically what we're going to be doing, basically what I showed you. Also, we have a hash map. I didn't want to show you, like, I didn't want to waste your time typing it all out. So I just kind of... Uh, wrote it beforehand. So we're going to be maintaining a result. Initially, it's going to be zero. And then we're just going to start iterating through the entire input string, right? So in Python, you can just iterate through whatever the length happens to be. So this i is going to be our index. And remember, so the first thing we're going to check is, are we going to be subtracting this value? So how can we know if we're going to be subtracting the value? We're going to check Okay, first of all, does it have a character that actually comes after it? Because if it does have a character that comes after it, then we'll actually compare the values. So first we'll check if i plus 1 is in bounds. So that'll make sure that we don't go out of bounds. So if that's the case, then we're going to check, okay, what's the value of the character at index i? We can get that from our map, which is called Roman. So Roman, what are we going to pass in? The key value, which is the character s. Uh, the character at index i, and then we're going to check, is this actually smaller than the next character? We can just get that simply with Roman s of i plus 1. So if it's actually smaller, right, that's wrong. That's not supposed to happen. Remember, remember, it's supposed to be in decreasing order, but if it is in increasing order, that means that the smaller value has to be subtracted. So this value has to be subtracted from the result. So that's exactly what we're going to do, subtract that from the result. If this is the case, yes, we subtract. Otherwise, the else case is the simple case where, yes, we're just going to add the value instead, right? We're going to add Roman, uh, whatever the value is of this particular character. So that's all we need to do. That's the entire code. Yeah, just a simple if else statement with a hash map and a for loop. So it's a definitely a good fundamental problem to understand your basics. So with that, we can just go ahead and return the result and I'll submit it to make sure that it works. And yes, it does. This time it was 48 milliseconds, uh, greater than 65%, but Pyth our leak code is pretty random uh, with these runtimes, so I wouldn't honestly pay too much attention to these. I ran it a couple seconds ago and it was 40 milliseconds, so it's really not that big of a deal. Hopefully this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot, and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.